Thank you, Emer, and could I just ask everybody if they just put themselves on mute until you want to speak, please? Um, so just to confirm that um, we've got a quorum and obviously the meeting's virtual. I just want to check with everyone that they can see and hear everything okay. Sound, happy days, nodding heads and thumbs up, great. And if anybody's on their phone, um, we'll just have to work out how we're going to make sure they get brought in because I know it's awkward. Um, so we we'll haven't... Amor, have you received everybody's in? There's no need for delegated authority, sure there's not? No, that's it. Full, full compliment. Yeah, great stuff. So, um, and the minutes of our last meeting was the 24th of March, and they're on page five. So just that, seeking your consent to agree the minutes. Agreed? Great. Uh, I haven't received any mod any uh, matters arising. So I'll just go st straight through to in review received any matters? No? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just go straight through to agenda, uh, agenda item four, and that's the review of private members' bills. And you will remember um, that we agreed to undertake a renewed review of PMBs and for the clerk to draft terms of reference. So on page 14 of your pack, um, there's a further paper which does include draft terms of reference uh, and they've been drawn from papers drafted from previous mandates. So this committee's previous discussions we requested and received from Finance Committee and, the, and also correspondence from the Speaker. So I just want to seek your views on the draft terms of reference that Eamor included in our pack. Has anybody any views on it or are you so content or what's crack? Chair, could I just um, say that I, I went over them and they seem quite broad and I couldn't think of anything to add to the value of them, so I'm content with them. Thank you. They seem very well put together. Thanks, Sinead. Anyone else? Any comments or amendments? No. So everybody seems content enough. So we were well done. That's a good piece of work. I agree with Sinead. You're almost looking at these things for faults. And if you can't find any, then you just have to accept they're all right. So I suppose that's where we're at. So just to seek formal agreement, are we content with the draft terms of reference? Agreed. We're modeled. Thank you. Carl, can I ask um, Amber Jane Hughes is the committee content to receive a briefing from the bill office then at the next yeah. meeting too? So I, I was going to su suggest that, Amir, I think we, we could all benefit from that. Just to, I suppose, just to find out what the existing processes are, what the background is, even for the bill office to point out any procedural weaknesses that are currently in place for PMBs. Um, so if we could invite someone from the bill office at our next meeting, which is with the May, that, are you content, everyone? Yeah? Okay. And can we also um, seek agreement to ask Emer to bring a further paper which will outline any possible research that we may need or may wish to commission um, and the list of potential stakeholders for consultation as part of a review into the private members' bills? Is that agreed also? Good stuff. Thank you. So, item agenda uh, five, um, member statements. You as well remember, at our last committee meeting, we agreed was the time is really appropriate to return to the issue of member statements. And we received a further update from the speaker, which acknowledged that the downward trend with regard to COVID figures, which is great news, but also the fact that scheduling of assembly business has returned to its normal processes. And the speaker also asked whether the committee would now be able to return to its consideration of member statements. So with that said, at page 23 of our PACs, there's a detailed paper from Emer, which reminds the committee of the work previously undertaken in 2020 um, on the topic of member statements. And the paper asks us to consider whether progress can be made on a number of the points in the inquiry in light of the suggestions made by the speaker 
and notify the committee at the last meeting. So I'm just seeking people's views on that, and particularly on a number of the suggestions made by the speaker. So, Jerry, Jerry go ahead. It was actually from the previous session, Chair, but I'll comment on this. Um, I think just uh, just generally speaking, I think um, the last discussion we had on it, I think I indicated um, our party support about uh, having a sort of flexible um, state of play for member statements so there can be a bit of uh, leeway. I think there's a system in the South where it's it's quite flexible and, and um, quite broad region and allows for a range of topics to be discussed kind of quickly uh, beyond the uh, sort of current matter uh, of the day system and urgent oral. So, um, yeah, just a general point is that I, th I think it's a it's a positive suggestion that would be for us as a committee looking at it um, in a bit more detail. So I would be certainly for that. Yeah, so in Jerry. Um, anyone else? Is that Sinead, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Chair, again. Um, similar to Jerry, I, you know, I think, again, this has been quite well put together and it's quite exhaustive in its proposals. But the Speaker's Office did raise a point that had been brought up before, now, and I think maybe a bit of clarity around it. Um, he had referred to how he sees this as um, maybe taking away the rise in the matters of the day that have come forward because he's saying that there's uh, he's being presented with matters of the day that aren't making the cut that may fall in under this. And I suppose maybe um, just a wee briefing paper on what are the what are the rules of what does and doesn't make the matter of the day, just so we understand where the grey area is between these two topics. You know, just so f for some clarity, I appreciate that, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, no bother, Sinead. And I also, like, I would see this as an addition to rather than instead of. So the more flexibility and choice that members have to raise important issues, the better. So, Weimer, um, not with what anybody else is going to say, can we put that down uh, an item to come back to? Yeah. Certainly, yes. Um, Paul Gill is also in attendance just to put more meat on the bones of the, the speaker's response and to talk to that issue if you want, committee wanted to yeah. do it now. And apologies, Paul, um, whatever way my screen is on this video, this video tablet we have, I can't see. Um, so, Paul, if, if, before I bring you in, does any any other member have any other queries before I bring Paul in? And maybe he could raise those, he could answer those as well? No? Well, maybe Paul will trigger some questions off. Paul, are you free to speak? I am, yes. Uh, th thank you, Chair. And uh, actually, I might be able to address uh, the points that Sinead Badley had raised there without the need to bring back further information. So, Speaker has been, uh, I think, very frustrated that he hasn't been able to find opportunities to accommodate members that want to raise topical issues. So, even over the course of this week, there were requests that came in in relation to the disgraceful attacks on the Syrian family in Newry, for example. There were requests that came in in relation to the desecration of the Jewish graves in, in uh, Belfast City Cemetery. Uh, there was even a request yesterday in relation to the attack on the police officer. And the way matters of the day are written is that uh, it has to be a matter of exceptional public interest and it also has to affect all the people of Northern Ireland. So that is quite tight, uh, and very often then the Speaker isn't actually in a position where he actually has the discretion to, to agree that the matter be taken as a matter of the day if he can't be satisfied that's something that affects all the people of Northern Ireland. So what he hopes is that with the introduction of topical statements like this, it, it wouldn't be for him to make a call as to whether or not those requirements had been met. It would be for the members themselves simply to be of the view, this is something that I want to raise. Uh, he wouldn't have to get into considering whether or not it, it met that standard uh, and therefore it would be much more straightforward. Uh, so had we had member statements as half an hour of business uh, on Monday uh, when we started, there would be no issue for uh, the members that wanted to raise those matters doing that and taking three minutes to talk about it. But rather than it being everybody talking about the same thing, the next member then could have raised a different issue uh, and so on and so forth. So it's about creating space for topical issues to be addressed much more easily. It's about creating greater flexibility for members. Uh, and it's really just uh, then uh, about in ensuring as well that it's the speaker, he doesn't find himself happy to do the things that he thinks are very important. Thank you, Paul. 
Thank you for that, Paul. Um, Sinead, does that answer the query that you got? Yes, Chair. Paul, thank you so much. That, that is very helpful. I um, had expected it to be something that, but, but that's very succinct and helpful as always, Paul. Um, so I suppose then it, it does turn our attention, which the reference does anyway, about the timing and frequency and all of that. It moves us on to those questions. But thank you, Paul. That was very helpful. Any other member? Um, Carl Jerry would like to come in. Yes, Jerry, go for it. Right, thanks, Carl. Thanks, Paul. Paul, I didn't really realise that was an option. Um, if you could maybe just tease that out a bit about, I assume that it would have to be a, the same item that everybody's speaking on, but you're saying there's scope uh, within the either starting order to be amended or in terms of what we decide to have, you know, for talk's sake, a half an hour slot every Monday or every Monday, Tuesday, and effectively members can kind of address Address how they see fit, so to speak. Is that is that an option, and, and the people do that in other jurisdictions, or could you maybe just tease that out a wee bit more? It would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah, just to confirm. That's that's exactly what's been proposed. You know, the speaker wants to find a way to accommodate more members being able to raise topical issues that don't quite meet the standard for being accepted as matters of the day. Now, one of the things you have in your terms of reference is to discuss whether there might be certain things that shouldn't be included under topical statements, and that might be things like attacking, attacking the integrity of another member or something like that, but, but those would be very limited. I think, generally speaking, the Speaker is keen to ensure that if a member thinks something is important enough, whether it's a constituency issue or it's expressing solidarity or expressing commiserations or whatever the case might be, that there's a way that our procedure should allow that to be accommodated. <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's really flexible. I think that's what members were hoping that would be achieved, Paul, to be fair. Yeah. Um, so has any anyone else got any questions or comments to make? No? Okay, so um, sorry, what, what we'll do is, and Paul, you're, um, maybe it's just my machine, but you sound like you're underwater there for a wee bit. I know you're not, I can see you, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, okay, so in relation to the, we're content for, for, for that to be brought forward. Emer, so what is the next steps for that? Um, well, I wanted um, to test members, if, if members specifically had a view on frequency. There were three sort of issues that the speaker's letters yeah. didn't address. So frequency, how often? were that could be scheduled and the last one was the restrictions um, and I'm happy to bring back more information on, on, on that for the next meeting or suggestions or proposals if the members don't have particular preferences on either of the frequency, the scheduling or any particular restrictions. I think no need restrictions, I think we need to see what the restrictions are now there's examples of it there. Mm -hmm. So, but if we could maybe just uh, for sure, for sure, just look to see what those restrictions are so we can get those restrictions agreed. Um, and I would assume that members' preference would be for, but I'm not, I don't want to assume. So even we could indicate now, would it be, you know, a half hour for each sitting um, on a Monday morning or a Tuesday morning? Um, so if we could get that sorted um, and even but the more information we get so we could take back our party to make decisions at the next meeting which is the 5th of May so if we could get those things bottomed out in advance Amer, I think everybody would appreciate that is that far enough members is there anything there that's not included that I would need to no Carol yeah yeah, ju just on, on that point, I mean, I, I think that we should try and get it bottomed out for the next meeting. I wouldn't like to see it being any longer than half an hour. I think that sometimes we try to squeeze an awful lot in and I can only speak for myself and I know it's not going to impact all members, but we have substantial pieces of legislation coming through the Justice Committee, which are going to take up massive amounts of time and we're going to have plenty of, of very, very late sittings. So I just think that that, need, that does need to be a consideration. No, and I, I think that's fair enough. Um, and a half an hour, I mean, within a half an hour, we need to agree, you know, how long did someone speak? I mean, I mean like, to be frank, a member statement could last 
for one person on one issue. You could have a half hour's worth or you could have five minutes worth. It all depends. The fact that the facility is already used, I think, um, was causing people concern. And as we all know, when it comes to legislation, people can not say what they want and not the title in every so often. So there's plenty of opportunities for people to speak. So, Eamon, are you clear on what you're being asked to do? Yes, I'll bring back further information for members' consideration on just the outstanding um, items enable to enable the committee to make a more informed decision and take back to party groups at the next meeting. Is that fair enough? So if we get that before the next meeting, we should be able to make a decision on the 5th of May. Okay, good stuff. Um, and then again, in the paper that Eamor set out in paragraphs 23 and 26. So we need to look at things. So even in the papers that we have today, I mean, we can start the process within parties to work out what the needs, the well, fixed time that's set out in standing orders. Uh, or is it just to leave the time in a business to the committee to determine either, the business committee to determine either way, we need to look at the papers that we have to try and inform discussions and whatever information we've asked of Eamor that we get that and make the decision at the next meeting. Is that okay? Good stuff. Okay. Um, and again, that includes, you know, the formal restrictions of what we may say, which again was set out. It's already set out in Stanton Order 73, brackets 1. But even within that, at paragraph of Beamer's paper, she gives some examples. I, I can't think of any others, um, but it's not to say... Somebody else won't. So we'll get, if we could get that sorted, um, that'll be a good bit of work and a decision that we'll make at our next meeting. Okay. So if people are content, we'll move on to agenda. Uh, Paul, listen, thanks very much for that. Okay. Thank you. Um, agenda item seven is a work, work program and a paid sixty of our pack, we put in a draft core work program which sets out to propose scheduling of work up until the summer recess and you'll be aware that the dates are indicative items of the work and we can reschedule them if others become a priority. But you know, just to ask members are they content if we agree the draft forward work programme and do any of us have any other amendments or additions that you'd like to make that's not included? No, I can't see everybody so Amers there's no hands raised um, and nothing okay. in the chat. Okay, good stuff. Um, so agenda item eight, chairperson's, bu chairperson's business. You, you may remember um, at our last meeting that I agreed to meet informally with the speaker and his officials today um, to discuss his letter of the 22nd of March and protector of the use of Irish language and Ulster Scots in the assembly. Um, and just to inform us that I've asked Emer to provide um, the rest of us with a note of the the, the meeting with the proposal um, on the way forward for the next uh, committee meeting. And basically, what we've what we agreed to do was to try and get additional information on what we can do about bringing interpretation, translation services, or sorry, infrastructure into. Uh, the assembly, um, and also, you may remember in the NDNA commitments, we agreed to look at a sign language bill. So, Emer, it just occurred to me that we perhaps we could write to the minister for communities as well to get an update on that bill and where it's sitting. Um, so, my suggestion, and the meeting was very informal, and you know, nothing was said at the meeting, it wasn't already laid out in the letter, but my instinct is to try and get further information, Emer, if we can, on you know, what it is we need to do to make progress with this, you know, including um, what what items do we need to discuss, um, you know, how soon do we, do, does, for example, does the Procedures Committee come up with a motion do you agree this before the commission could take any action? I mean, if we could try and get some information on that. So basically, that was the meeting. I'm going to open it up for people for further comment um, in case Emer needs to do other bits in relation to information that's needed. So uh, as I said before, I can't see everyone. So if you just want to indicate if you want to speak and I'll bring you in 
from the people that can see on the screen. The only person I can't see is Gary. Um, I, I can see the top of his head. I know he's not hiding, but <laughs> for some reason that's all I can see. So does anybody want to add anything to that or make any comment on it? Chair, I'll just make a quick comment if possible. Just like you, I, I don't know, I genuinely don't know what the role of the procedures committee is in this regard. Is the fact that it's a new decade, new approach enough um, for the commission or have the commission commu communicated anything to us to suggest that they need us to be part of it? So normally, um, Sinead, my understanding is that if there is it any changes to the well I'd say of a pandemic. So I mean it's and we did have discussions with the commission regarding the screens and that and the hybrid process in relation to virtual um uh, contributions to the assembly. But normally what would happen is that say for example, we've already got starting orders to say that you can use any language as long as you translate it. But when it comes to say for example ANDNA my, and maybe Paul, you could you could come in on this, but my understanding is that it's down to the procedures committee to bring forward a motion before the commission can act on it. So it's almost the consent for the commission to go off and procure whatever it is they need to do. Paul, would that be right, or is that too simplistic? No, I think that's a fair summary, uh, Chair. Um, NDNA uh, was obviously a, a political agreement, but the recommendations within it haven't yet actually, uh, and I'm talking about those now in relation to the Assembly and the use of Irish and Ulster Scots, haven't actually been endorsed by the Assembly. So what it would take is a, a motion to go forward to the Assembly, noting that recommendation and saying that the Assembly agrees with it, and then directing the Commission to put in place the necessary okay. infrastructure staff or whatever that's required. So uh, as Chair said, that wouldn't actually require standing orders to be amended because standing orders yeah. already provide that a member can speak in the language of their choice. So it would just really be a, a motion from this committee saying that the Assembly needs to put in place arrangements to allow members to be able to speak without having to translate their comments and for the Commission to put in place arrangements for uh, the necessary simultaneous, uh, simultaneous translation provisions. Sinead, does that answer your query? Yeah, it does. yeah to be fair, yeah, because I, th I think that was it. It was maybe getting a wee bit caught up in whether something had to go into standing orders. And then I suppose procedurally, um, you know, we will be the people that maybe have to give consideration to the logistics of this. So, you know, even though we may be able to get live feed from a translator, I, presu I presume to the chair, there's going to be a bit of a delay in that. Um, I, think, I think it's head functioning. Right, okay. So there wouldn't be any need for any stalling, you know, if people want to speak in Ulster Scots, for example, that as they're speaking, that's getting translated to you in English. Right, okay. So it you is know. that, yeah, it's just in real time. It's real and, time. Yeah. yeah. And then I suppose whether it's good practice at the outset, you know, at the early stages that members should be encouraged if and were possible, to provide their speeches or in their intention to the translator head. I just don't know what the protocol there might look like. You know, and maybe it's for procedures to pin that down. Is that the commission's role? No, I think for us, um, like, for example, at the minute, I know with signers, if you're, because I've used signers before, so if you try and give them... If you're doing a speech, we give it to him in advance. But you know yourself, yeah. if you throw something off for Q&A, yeah. then it's a bit more fluid. But I think that's the sort of questions that we could certainly use additional information on. Um, mm. And okay. But I know that if you're looking at real-time translation, then you're talking about uh, someone is speaking, it's being translated to you through a headset yeah. uh, in English. Um and we, we have the facility to do that now without even looking at starting orders, to be honest, do you know? I mean, like, even up at the speaker's table, there's headphones. Say, for mm -hmm. example, if anyone wanted to speak in any language, Ulster Scots or Irish, that the speaker has the ability to put, to whoever's in the chair has the ability to put their headset on, and then there's a responsibility to translate it in English. So I think what we could do is get a bit more information yeah, um, and even, um, Chair, if you don't mind, even in terms of other members having access to it in real time, because, you know, if we look at the European Parliament as an example, you can see how it works, but they all have access to headphones at all times. 
I think it is for everybody to have access to it for us all, not just the speaker. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. No uh, anybody else? Linda has indicated to come in. Okay, Linda, go for it. Carl, I think it's actually just been covered. I was I was just going to say before Sinead had said there, like we don't we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's plenty of other parliaments that are already doing this. It's it's fairly straightforward, and I think we just look at best practice around the world, and, and that's that's where we take how we take it forward. Is probably what Sinead actually said when she talked about the European Parliament. That's okay. exactly the kind of example I was thinking of. No bother. Is there anyone else, Tom? I can see you. Jerry, did you indicate? Yeah. Tom, you go first. Did Tom just drop off the caller? Tom, or Jerry, see why we're waiting on Tom coming in? Yeah. Do you want to make your point? Yeah, go for it. Um, I appreciate this is obviously about Ulster Scots and, and Irish in, in that context and, and the NA, but um, just a question. Um, you know, when, the, when these changes are made, presumably if somebody's speaking a different language, Spanish, French, or whatever, um, you know, if, if our, our growing communities, obviously, which are which are increasing mm -hmm. in the North, um, there's provision for those as well, or will any further changes need to be made, or, or does that cover all those uh, different languages as well, or do you know? Well, I, I mean, the starting order at the minute is, Jerry. if anybody, like I remember one of the, I think it was Leslie Craig got up and spoke in German one day and he had to translate it into English, um, which is fine. And you're right, we've got people who have made these shores their home and we need to make sure that the institutions are welcome to them. So it's because Irish and Ulster Scots was mentioned in the NDNA, we're looking at it now. But you're 100% right. If the infrastructure is there and the will is there, then it could be any language for that matter. So um, that's that's my understanding of it. Um, Amor, did Tom come back in? Sorry, um, Gary, did you your point? As in the audience, um, Carol, we're just trying to get him back into the spotlight via broadcasting. Tom, can you confirm? Hello, yes. There we go. Yes, we hear you, Tom. Go for it. Okay. Uh, look, folk, uh, this is in the NDNA, uh, no doubt about it. I suppose the question I have, a couple of questions, is first of all, is it needful at this moment in time? Uh, I'm, I'm not pouring cold water on this by no means, but what I want to, you know, I'm just questioning in my own mind when we take a look at the situation we're in, the whole COVID situation, we look at, the uh, obviously the amount of expenditure that has been over this period of time and, and I'm just wondering at this moment in time is it needful that's the first thing the other issue would be about whenever Emer would be looking at all of this uh, uh, the, the issues that, that's going to be looked at to bring back to the next meeting would it be possible to tie in the uh, well Close, as close as we can as it was to the costing of all of this and what all of this would cost to set all of this up within the uh, within the chamber. Um, and, you know, it's just it's just that question going through my mind, is this really needful and, and would it be used at this moment in time? Thank so, you. Is there anyone else that's indicated that I can't see, Amy? No. No, that's not a plan. Yeah. Are you looking in? Yeah, go for yeah. it. Hello? Yeah? Go ahead. Okay. Um, no, I would be interested in the cost of it. Um, you're, are you talking about a speech interpreter also? For yeah. the partially, partial hearing? Yes, you are. You would be. And then the cost of that f would be interested. I'd be interested in all of that. Okay, so Emer, we need to know. Um, there was there's lots of questions. I know you've taken notes, but it's from Tom and Rosie's point of view. We need to find out what the cost is. So even if we could try and get the negative cost, and Paul, I don't know if that's something the commission could help us with. I'm not sure how we would find that out. Yeah, I think it is something that the commission will be able to assist you with. Uh, I know that they've 
done some preliminary work to, to look into to costs, for example, how many interpreters might need to be um, employed, what the likely cost of an interpreter would be, and therefore what the overall costs would be. So I, I think if you're agreeing to um, seek further information in this, we can ask relevant commission, commission officials to come back and for them to address some of these issues the next time that they come to you. Well, I, I think it's clear, and thanks that, Paul, but I think it's clear that people are asking a few questions. So if we could go and with, you know, just try and get as many of those queries answered as possible, Emer, and try and get that information brought back to the committee as soon as possible. Is that far enough? Okay, we all agree on that? Yes? Okay, good stuff. Um, I don't have any other items Anything under, if nothing under AOB, does anybody else have anything that they want to discuss under AOB? No? Emer, has anybody indicated to you that I can't see? No, nobody has indicated. Uh, Gary seems to have dropped out. Um, I just can't see him either on the video or in the list now. I'm not sure at what point that happened. I can check. Okay, well, listen, um, unless Gary's coming back in and I can't see him either and I can't see Morris either, but... Um, Morris is I mean, still here. Yeah, so um, no one has indicated that they don't, they don't have anything they want to raise under AOB. So without further ado, um, the date in September next meeting is Wednesday, the 5th of May at half three, Vast Arleaf. Is that far enough, everyone? Well, listen, thank you very much. Thank you, Emer, And again, thank you, Paul, for your assistance. And the meeting is now adjourned. Emer, you take us all. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is